Greetings. Akesh. Yes. Hey, Lontano here. Hello. Welcome to the group. Nice, Thank you. Nice that you visited. Thank you. You're doing it much earlier today. Yes, that was an intention. Some people are kind of early birds. Yes, there is light outside. <laughs> How is everything? Things are fine. Thank you, Max. How are your celebrations? I haven't had one in two days. <laughs> okay. What was the last one? Two days ago. What, what, what was that? What was it about? It was a friend of mine who had graduated from his in intellectual process. So. Congratulations to him as well. Who, yes. who do you have nearby? Pardon me? Who do you have nearby, near to you? Just my significant person. Say uh, hi to her. She is listening. Very good. Very good. So, I, what I see is when I come down here all the time is a greater showing of light among you. I see that you have taken advice from many of the species and many, and even from myself, that you're knitting yourself together in a, in a very good way. In fact, I see groups of people coming together now. You know, the uh, areas of communication are opening greater. There are pockets like this all over the world. And these are the kinds of pockets that will be leadership positions because you're farther ahead. Do you understand that? Yeah. 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 There are very dark pockets in the earth as well where no light shines, where no hope exists. This is where we come in as species, humans, light. Together we form light. We must move out. It is time for us to become more than what we are. Do you understand? Yeah. If you are encountered by the darkness, I believe De Coeur touched on this the other night. And I was listening, and it inspired me to tell you more about it. Because the light within you spreads out. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. And if you, your light is trying to be extinguished by darkness, and your body is sacrificed, do you realize that that actually releases a hundredfold more time light than had been released in the world before because the sacrifice was pure? However, I am not looking to see any of you have this happen. <laughs> that is not what I'm speaking of. But I am telling you that when goodness is sacrificed to help those come up in through the light, their light increases a hundredfold. Your light increases whenever you help someone else that is groping in the darkness, shall we say? Is that a call? Does that make sense to you? Yeah. These people would have nothing to do with the light in this sense. But yet, if you cannot remain silent whenever they are there, if they approach you and speak to you, you must show them that you are willing to speak to them and come to them. It is much like your old book, the Bible, or the Quran, or the Bhagavad Gita. They shed light. These old forms of writing that you look at for inspiration and to connect yourself to God have much, much truth. But if you look at them with the wrong state of mind, you will get nothing out of them. If you look at them as just words and, and just stories, you will get nothing from that. But if you look at them for inspiration, 
you can find it. Because it is hidden in the words, you see. The light comes out of the words when there's light going into the words. It reflects back to you. Does that make sense to you? If you look at it with light, you will find light. If you look at it with darkness, you will find darkness. It is the way of the world. It is the way of the universe. You get back what you send. Does that make sense? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Was I about ready to have a mishap? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, then, thank you very much. <laughs> But I will say to you now that we have been watching this particular group that comes in and out of here. The power here, the energy here, is increasing. Can you be a witness to that? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. And the energy that you find in your Reiki share is increasing as well. As well as knitting together far places in considering to you, they are coming to you. Did you notice that? People are attracted to the light. Even those that with doubt. You saw the people walking by at the YMCA and looking in and saying, what's going on here? What is? What is happening? What is happening? What event is this? It was a nice showcase. And they saw, what did they see? They saw people being helped. They saw people being a light. They heard wonderful conversation. And what does that do? That attracts them to you. Attracts them to you. And that's what we need to do. We, as a group, even me, continuing to attract people to ourselves so that we can share the light because eventually they will have to ask. They will have to ask what it is about you or what it is about this group that makes them attractive to you. Does that make sense? And when you talk amongst yourselves. Do not be silent, quiet, speak loudly and proudly. Others may hear, they may disagree, but they see how proud you are and how happy you are and what light they, you shed. And this may spark something within them. I know for my planet, when this era came about for us, enlightenment beyond what we had had before, it sparked many doubts. It sparked many people to question. But you know, questioning is a good thing, a very good thing. Because once you question, then you find. Once you seek, then you find. Without the search, the light does not just fall on you, but you must seek it. Right now, well, that was sort of incorrect. The light does fall on you, but not in the same way as if you seek it. Does that make sense? You, you can be in the light, but not be aware until you open your eyes and say, ah, I have been taking the light for granted. But yet, with you here, I can tell you that you have searched, you have looked, and there is light, and you can find it everywhere. You can also find darkness everywhere, but when you seek the light, the light finds you. And that light comes into you and out. And I think Tika used the word beacon. Beacon. 
is what you must be. You must be a beacon. Because you cannot hide your light. The light within you. There was a verse in the Bible, do not hide your light under a bushel, I believe it says. This is the same concept. This is the same beauty of the light. For if you hide your light, how are you going to draw people in? How are you going to save the ship on, that is out at sea? They do not see the light. Unless you become the beacon. The beacon will come to you. The, the ship will come to you because you are a safe harbor, right? Yes. Right. So you are the beacon. Do not hide that. Be proud of your light. Be proud of who you are and your accomplishments. Bring each other up with that. Learn more. Talk to each other. Net together. And I see the netting is coming together now. More. This group is coming and joining with that group. This group is coming and joining with that group. Soon it will be a large community of light. It's a beautiful thing. I see it happening and that's why I bring it to you. I bring it to you because I've seen it happening right here in this area. And I, I am very proud of you. I'm very proud. That is all I have to say. If there is any questions, please ask. Can you, can you give us any uh, poetry, psalms, uh, proverbs, especially the ones you teach to your children, which would be very representative of your culture, or maybe of the th of the ideas you tried to you you t you taught us just now. What we teach our children is that is that what I'm gathering? Some poetry, something condensed, maybe your poetry, even your poetry on that topic. Oh, we tried that once. It was great! <laughs> oh, well, let me see what I have here. Very good. Um, but what we teach our children about the light is, by example, for many, for the most part. I'm asking about poetry and or we do, something formal. And we do have books such as your Bible and Bhagavad Gita and Koran. Can you read from there? there? Um, and we do teach that to our children. We can, I can give you some passages. Excellent, thank like you. like to hear something. I do not have that readily available by my side, but I, I do have some, there are some things that are memorable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me stop for a moment and think. <laughs> You're calling on something that I haven't done for a little while, so bear with me. Oh, okay. The center of light is in the heart, and the heart is the center of light. Let us become one with ourselves, because if we become scattered, how can we then pull that together without problems? I'm using the word problems, but we have a different word. The entire sky fills with clouds now, and you cannot see the stars. So how do you get rid of the clouds so you can see the stars? You must let it rain first, and then the sky will open. How's that? <laughs> Very good. Anything else? Well, anything for children? What, do you have poetry for children? Poetry for children? Well, there is poetry for children. I don't read it often. Can you ask your mate? Maybe she remembers something. Okay, let me see. She has had many children, yes momentarily. Let her tell me what she wants to say.
Mm. <laughs> One of the things that she's told me that they teach the children is that we do have trees and plants and things of that nature just as you do. I'm going to preface this a little bit. We have water and land and seas and fishes as, well, they don't look quite like yours, but they are aquatic. But she tells the children, or they teach the children, when you're in the water, do you become part of the water? Not necessarily. When you're in a picture, with trees and plants and flowers. Do you become part of the scenery? No. And yes. So what does that tell you? What is it like to be one with something else? Okay? We're teaching them that their individuality is important to every aspect of what they do. So that they're, when they grow, they are part of the picture, but yet they're individually separated from the picture. They are part of the water, but they are removed from the water. They are in the light and part of the light, but yet it's their individual light. Is that very good? It was the poetry, but it was a nice teaching. Everybody, prepare your questions. I have the last question. Uh, so the story about the rain. What was the source of that? What was the source of what? You just read a poem about rain. What was that? Oh, where was it from? Yeah, it was from one of our ancient writings. Uh huh. Do you have yes. common gods with us? Yes. Which ones? The one God. Okay. Any more? The one God who is many and one, and we are many and one. We, he reaches out to us in many forms mm -hmm. and is in everything. And we are in everything. And, we, and it's the sharing of the oneness and the manyness. Thank you. Do you have common prophets with us? Prophets. No, we do not have the common prophets, but we know of your prophets. Mm -hmm. We do have ancient prophets and modern prophets as well. One thing about your society that we've noted is that up to a point, no prophet after that has been recognized. But there's many. You have many prophets among you. But up to a point of your New Testament... After that, there's no more prophets. We wonder what happened to them in your writings. But we understand now from the telepathic humans that this was an era that was written about. That you still believe in prophets, but you don't recognize them the same. The Catholic uh, Church uh, says saint is like a prophet, but not necessarily. That's a confusion for us. We have John Lennon, Casey, Einstein. But you don't call them prophets. I do. You do. <laughs> but I mean, they are not known as prophets. Not mainstream, yes. I don't ever hear anyone say, the prophet John Lennon. I don't hear that. Mm. Whereas you hear, the prophet Isaiah, the prophet Micah. You see what I'm saying? We do have prophets, yes. And they are among us, and they are separated and integrated, because we must hear what they have to say all the time. So they are special people with special light, and they are recognized at birth. Can you just give a little blurb of your favorite prophet? Just describe them, the name, what they teach about. Um, Ventira. Uh -huh. She prophesied that our race 
and beings would come to a higher understanding when we understood ourselves. This sounds very simple. Doesn't that? It sounds very, very simple. But if you think about it, it's a very, very complex thing to understand who you really are. And when we finally did learn who we were as a community, not as necessarily all individuals, but yet that's part of it, but when you learn who you are, you become part of the community. And the community becomes part of you. And so her prophecy about understanding who we were as blues became a topic of conversation everywhere. Until she said something else. And this is what she said. While you're coming to understand yourself, don't ignore your friends. Don't ignore the light. Don't ignore who you want to be. Bring it all into you. Process it. And then let the light sift through it. Because then you will find the truth. Does that make sense to you? It's beautiful, thank you. It gave me goosebumps. It's beautiful. Everybody, any other questions? Isabel, you're mm -hmm. first. What do you want me to do? Ask questions. Oh. I, I see that there is some peacefulness going on right here. Mm -hmm. That is good. But if you have questions, I will entertain them. That's fine. Be not afraid. Bill? <clears throat> are you living in a three-dimensional duality as we are? Or are you in a fourth or fifth or higher? We started in third dimension. However, after a time, we realized that the fourth dimension was much more appropriate for us to live in as we grew. So we have moved from the third dimension to the fourth. You can go back to a third dimensional life if you would like, yes. In that sense, we have duality. Because there are those that have not moved to fourth dimension. They remain in the third dimension, but we can still communicate. We have that ability. When you can live in the fourth dimension, you can live in the third dimension. You can communicate between the two. And there are reasons for those who want to still live in third dimension. They feel it's more appropriate for who they are. Do you understand that? They might be people that work their intellectual thoughts on a realm that is more solid. Fourth dimension tends to have its um, light-heartedness as far as move, movement. They prefer to be actual actually in the moment. We can actually be out of the moment. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. They prefer to be a study in, in that time. I'm, I'm not sure how I to explain it any further. I think you need to define duality. I think even God would have duality. Duality is, is more than one. <laughs> so, as, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Third dimension to fourth dimension, that's two different dimensions, that's dual. So, Do you have negativity in fourth dimension? Pardon me? Negativity, suffering in fourth dimension. Negativity? Yes, negativity and suffering. There is some, but it lasts a short time because we have conquered many of the things that cause people to suffer. That doesn't mean that they can come on without us knowing it. Some people are more isolated than others, and they can get in trouble when they have little contact with another telepath. Because if we are in contact with them, we can know 
if there's mental problems. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. But if they are isolated, we don't always speak to them telepathically, and therefore we do not know their problems. So, but their illnesses can be treated easily. Mental problems, a little more difficult, but they can be treated. But you see, with mental problems, sometimes the lack of reality can, help, can be a problem. But we do have certain chemicals, drugs as you might call them, that would help them to understand what they're going through and bring them into a closer alignment with reality. Not that it always works, but it does in many, many cases. You have suicides. We have not had a suicide in many years. There are suicides. We know of suicides. Not like your planet. Not like your planet. How about if, somebody is, if somebody is sensed to have that inclination, then there is therapy for that. And we bring them back into the community. You see, those who are not in the community are the only ones that are suicidal. They are outside the community. Do you understand that? They are isolated. So we must bring them into the community and then they understand. They are loved. They are understood. They have purpose. They can move forward with us. And the sense of suicide the loss of their own life becomes secondary and finally non-existent. Look at police. 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 There are those that aspire to become officials of governing peace. Yes. In that sense, yes. They govern the peace with their ideal ideals. Let me put it that way. Does How does sense? one become into the fourth dimension? The fourth dimension is, it exists uh, without us coming into it. But we have learned that there is a way to get into the fourth dimension. We have had our evolutions where our mind is more closely related to a, a higher dimension. Does that make sense to you? Okay. And then, after discovering what it is, you integrate it. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Why would it, one go back then? One just... Personal, personal preference. Okay. Now, when you were saying the community brings those that are having trouble, suicidal, are they basically third dimension? Because I would imagine suicide would not be in fourth dimension. You are correct. Fourth dimension has no suicides. It is the third dimension that sometimes can become isolated. Their telepathy is less. That it's is less. Correct. They have yes. some, but it's, it's less. less. Okay. And so that is a very good point that you bring up. Because their less telepathy can actually bring them to a point where they feel like they're not part of. Right. And that is where it has to be discovered. We, we actually reach out to the third dimension I was just going to say, is there some way the fourth dimension can... Our peacekeeper, police... Got it. Okay. Actually are charged with taking care of situations in the third dimension. So, okay. and making it aware to them that they will be visited or at least looked on at least once or twice in our period of thoughts and time. Be because of our free will. You can turn that back on. The beginnings of some civilizations where hybridization began were pure alien. Does that make sense? And they, and actually human life is alien, so it came from elsewhere. Yeah. 
and you were seated. Yeah. Do you understand that? Yeah. So being a hybrid is not especially rare. However, you became your own species, in interbreeding and gathering the terra, the information from the earth, from your mother earth, made you a human, okay? Your, your surroundings, your integrations, you became totally different than any species ever know. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just confirms. <laughs> ah. She thinks told that about so. me quite often. So. Told you so, told you so. Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, your integration with the seeding made you totally different than any other species. So, and your planet, the way it is, the way it moves, the way it interacts with the other planets, believe it or not, that has something to do with how you are as a species. Your interaction in the universe as a planet, around the sun, and when the planet that is now known as your asteroid belt exploded, that changed things as well. So, yes. But there has been hybridization happening after this, after the fact, in this modern age, because it is this modern age, and they would like to see what they can enhance. Propose again. Channeling like process. Mm. They come into the body <clears throat> and they uh, form a protective barrier around the egg. And then they take that and they move it to the another dimension. Would I have any? But they have changed their policies on how they do things now. Because they used to abduct, as you know, and they do not do that anymore. They used to do many things without permission. Mm. But now they at least search the mind to find out if this would be agreeable with the individual. They may not ask permission with everything, but they will find out your disposition on and thoughts about it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Okay, I'm back. Oh, thank you. I need replenished. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you drank something? So, I'm not sure if that would be the appropriate term, but yes, I did Im imbibe something. Any more questions? There's somebody else that wants to come through, but I do not know if they will. Go ahead. I would like to know where my children are and when I... You can leave it off if you like. All right. It's not important to me. The best part is gone. <laughs> um, what are the news in the colonies? Ah, the colonies. Nina is very busy. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. I would like to speak to her for one minute. All right. To see if she would like to come. Okay.
My name is James. Hi, James. I am a telepath from the colony. Welcome to the group. Uh, finally, we speak to you directly. Did you speak to? You, did I speak to you before? No, you spoke to Randall. Randall. Thank you for coming through. Uh, tell me what you learned. What's the most important thing you can, you know, have only a few minutes, but whatever you can, you can teach. I mean, you are recorded and you will go on YouTube. Oh. If you don't mind. Um, I can stop the recording if you like, whatever. That is not. Okay. Um, I'm becoming acclimated to this mm -hmm. procedure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the most important thing I would say about the human colonies is that we're learning who we are dealing with. Mm -hmm. We're learning what we are dealing with mm -hmm. and how advanced they are and that they are allies and not foes. Mm -hmm. So my interaction with these do mm -hmm. was difficult I because see. we have different kinds of telepathy. Okay. I have human telepathy and he has yield telepathy. We were able to speak but it was challenging. Okay. So just as it is being here is sort of challenge. Do you have trust in them now? Yes, I trust them. They tr they estimated my trust level at 93%. Okay. Which is high. Okay. There, we, at being human, have always a little bit of doubt, no matter what. How are the Pleiadians? Can we, can you, you know, how are, are, you, are they friends? Yes, they are friends. They seem to be condescending. Is it your feeling? It is just their way. Mm -hmm. It's just the way they are. Are they nice? I wouldn't call them nice. Are they committed to help? They're committed to help, yes. They're very blunt. Mm -hmm. But yet, I've learned to be very blunt in return. Uh -huh. Because if you are not, they're insulted that you are not being totally honest with them. Very good. Mm -hmm. So they prefer you be almost hostile with them. So ah. It's like, so come on, tell me what you want. So. Wow. And they respect that. But it's not in an angry way. Uh -huh. mm. They just want you to be totally clear, not vague, and not wishy-washy. How about Lyrans? How many Lyrans involved? I know Tukur, mm -hmm. and she has some associates. There uh -huh. are like seven Lyrans. Do you like them? On. The Lyrans are quite beautiful people, actually. Are they? Do they look sexy in any way? Um, not to me. Okay. <laughs> not to me. Mm -hmm. She looks like a big kitty cat. <laughs> uh -huh. In some ways. Uh -huh. Not really, but that's the closest you can okay. get. Okay. So are they allies with the Earth? Would they help? Oh, yes. The, the Lyrans are actually one of the most sympathetic. Uh huh. For, I have no idea why, but they seem to be the most caring, and they do have. It's difficult for them to talk to Pleiadians because they are, even though their voices are deep, they're very, they're not real harsh, at times. So Star Trek is a nice reference point. What is different from Star Trek over there? Star Trek. Yeah. Oh yes, I, I really never watched it very much. Oh, so it's not a good reference point. But what what new did they learn? What new did I yeah learn? the science fiction? Oh, there's much science. They can they can uh, personalize your tools, meaning that all your electronic ma machinery and equipment will only respond to you if that's what you want. I mean, you can it it's by they can do it five or ten different ways. Your eyes, your voice patterns, your breath, your, you know, just your fingerprints. There's so many things. But if I have a group of tools here, 
that I'm not allowed to use, I won't be able to use them. So the ascension and the announcements and the contact, how are they up to the to the job to, to we, do the announcements? We as humans have been asked to help them with first contact, right. yes. And being the first telepath, uh -huh. I was Randolph and I were called to uh -huh. go and talk to them about what we felt would be a responsible first contact. Well, they are they up, are they up to the job? Are they? Oh, oh, they're they're up to the task. But the problem is they do not understand humans as well as they should yet. And and mm -hmm. the other problem is that you, with the information that I gathered from them is that the humanity is not quite ready. Just right. not. There are pockets that are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We use the word pockets mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> pockets are ready, but not not the whole planet. So yeah. James, were you a person on Earth at one time? And I am, there? yes. And I will coming back to Earth. Where, what area were you from? I'm uh, from southern Canada. So is it a uh, co council with Arcturians, is it efficient? It seems like to be counterproductive. Everything that is proposed is kind the of... The Arcturians are very opinionated mm -hmm. and do not, do not listen well. Mm -hmm. um, they are under the impression that they have all the right answers. Mm -hmm. But they're learning slowly that they do not. Mm -hmm. When they talked, I talked to one Arturian briefly mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it was really painful. But um, what he gathered from me was contrary than any belief that he had of earthlings ever. Mm -hmm. So he took this back to the High Council and that has caused a, a pretty big uproar within the Arcturian mm -hmm. part. Have you met with Galactic Federation people? No, I have not. How good are their relationships in the colony? Is it up to the task? Are they working on, on the plans for the Earth? How would they be helping the whole colony? They're working on the plans and I will be uh, within those meetings several times and coming up. Are you aware of humancolony.org site? It has been mentioned at the meetings, but I have not been there. No. Have you read my book? No, I have not. That's very disappointing because I outlined very specific and detailed they plans do, for the colony. They give us specific information that they want us to have. They have, I, have, I can say that I've read portions of your book. Okay. But I have not read the whole thing. Are there colonies um, nearby, or the uh, only a few? They nearby? were. Uh -huh. There was one colony on Earth at one time, and it is no longer there. Okay, so it was on a, an island on the South Pacific, which was not known because it was a new volcanic island within the last thirty years. Mm -hmm. So, how do you see ascension? Is it coming closer? How does it feel? You, because you are ascended in a way. In a way. You are well, in I'm not truly ascended, but um, yes, I, I understand your question. Mm -hmm. And the answer to your question is, it's coming about in a very erratic way. Mm -hmm. um, they want more smooth transition than what they're seeing. So What's your estimate? A, is it... Would it take 200 years to ascend? No, it will not take 200 years. What's your estimate? Range? Um, they have not told me what that range is. but I mean, I could only predict in my own human thoughts. Mm -hmm. But I would say... Well, you said 200 years? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe that is fairly close. Is it fun to be telepathic? It can be. And then there are times when it's a real pain in the butt. Can you speak to Jesus? No, I haven't spoken to Jesus. Not personally. Uh, uh, do you have Yehiel around? or? I've, I met with several Yehiel, yes. They can channel Jesus. They can channel Jesus, but I am not 
been given that. Okay. Anybody? It's good to see the earth again, though. Oh, you're not seeing it much? Well, it's, I've been here, they have prolonged my stay. I've been here a month. Uh -huh. That's the longest anyone has ever been off planet. How does it uh, feel? Except for the one gentleman that is actually permanently off planet. How does it feel up there? It's not uncomfortable, but yet it's alien. Yes. I want to go there with my family and stay there. Would it be advisable? I don't know your family. In general, what is it a family-friendly place? What, what kids lose a lot? It's really quite... I'm not sure it would be family-friendly for one family. If there was a lot of families, maybe. But one family there would feel very isolated, I would think. Is it safe? It would, it's not unsafe, no. Do you have enough space? There's plenty of space. Can you wander into the mothership? You, I have freedom to move within 80% of the ship. Excellent. How does it feel when you go to alien parts? Do you wear a helmet? I have to have breathing apparatuses, uh -huh. yes. How does it feel? I mean, feel emotionally. They're a diligent peoples. Mm -hmm. And they are a... They are a positive people in many senses. Does it feel like human ships, cruise, cruise ships? No, it does not feel like that. No. Not at this time. When you meet aliens in the, in the corridor, how do they behave? They are usually just nod. They're what? Sorry. Usually nod. just nod. Oh, nod. And, and sometimes they will interact. Do they look scary? There are a couple species that are not good to look at, yes. Did you see insectoids there? Insectoids, yes, there's one there, yes. And I really, he is really quite hard to look at. Uh, are, have you ever met Anunnaki? Anunnaki, no. Reptoids? No. Uh, how does Orion look? Does he look like a, a human? An Orion? The orange guy? Orion? No, he would be an alien, like uh, maybe Swedish. From the one from Orion. Oh. He was part of the colony. He oh, introduced yes. the, 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 uh, the yeah. police in the colony. He does. He looks fairly human in some way. Yeah, most ways. How His eyes he... are a little bigger. What's your impression of Orions in general? Well, this particular Orion is different from what I understand. He's they like him. More, he's more human friendly, more uh, species friendly, whereas the Orions can be hostile. Is he good? Do, he, yes, do like the, their appearance. He is a right. refugee. He's he escaped somehow from uh, the Orion uh, area. So in general, we could communicate with Orion, individual Orions, maybe. Uh, I could. I couldn't talk very well with him. I did speak with him for a few minutes. Oh, only a few minutes. But uh, but from what I understand from my briefings, the briefings that they give you before you go into these meetings. They tell you a little bit about everybody and they tell you a little bit about what we're going to be discussing. Give give this some thought, give that some thought, you know, that kind of thing. How is Nina? Nina is a very excellent leader. Uh -huh. so. she, is she pretty? She's beautiful, yes. Uh-huh. Yes, yeah, she's a beautiful girl. Who is most accessible of aliens on the, on the, on the colony? Which species? Me. Uh, oh, well, Nina. Other than Nina. Oh, you yell. So you can get in hold a hold of you yell and uh, speak to them. Yes, if I want to speak to you yell, they will they will come. Yeah, or I'll go there. So. And children are dealing with which aliens? Children what? Children. Are, with which aliens are children dealing? The first colony has lots of children, right? Right. What aliens are they talking to? They're talking to you yell. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Uh, they they don't talk to Pleiadians. They're too harsh mm -hmm. for children, but they there is a layer in that they talk to you as well. So you yell are like ba good babysitters, right? You yell, no. The parents, the whatever parent figure is there, mm -hmm. usually takes care of their kids. But you yell are kind, are they? Yeah, they're kind. Mm -hmm. They're gentle. Yes. Gentle. They're very gentle. Can and that makes them very good with the kids, because. They look a little bit like E.T., so, uh -huh. you know, um, if 
they show the movie E.T. to them first. Oh, so you're referring to that movie of, of Spielberg? Yeah, they show them the movie E.T. Uh -huh. so they won't be as frightened when they meet them. Excellent. So, What's the difference from E.T.? How are you yell at different from E.T.? They're a little taller. Uh -huh. At least this... Is the face this longer? Um, they, they pretty much look um, like you would see on anything on the internet of you yell. A gray? Yeah, the grays. With, with a smooth face? Yes. Oh. Do they show any miracles? Any of them can disappear at once? Oh yeah, they disappear all the time. But the, the thing is about that, it's a particular place that they disappear. It's, there's a, a spot in the room where they move from dimension to dimension or uh -huh. from time to time or whatever it is. But it's a, a location. Mm -hmm. They have to be there. So. Are they telekinetic, any of them? Uh, they have not shown me that, but I'm sure they are. Can they control minds of humans just by mind? I'm sure they could, but they don't try to. They're trying to be very open. Mm -hmm. Any other miracles you saw? I saw the, some uh, pretty interesting machinery doing some pretty Have interesting Have you done things. field trips to other planets? <coughs> no. <coughs> That's disappointing. Did you ask for Is this water? Yes, please yes. go ahead. Yes. They are both ashamed. It's difficult for me to be here. I'm sorry. Yes. But that is very helpful. That's the first Thank contact you. we Thank have. You for <coughs> Please come up more often. That's so helpful. Sure. You mentioned on a ship you need different breathing apparatus. Uh, does that imply yes. that all the others don't have respiration the way we do? Do they need less oxygen or what? Um, I'm not sure what their air mass is made of, but I know that. Only you yield goes without suits there. All, every other species has to wear something. Oh, are Pleiadians uh, breathe in the same air as humans? No. They also use breathing apparatus. They have something that fits into their nostrils. So oh. most all of them are breathing something else. Correct. But Nina can? Nina is adaptive. Uh -huh. um, she has adapted to a couple different atmospheres. So becoming telepathic may, did, did make you did it make you more spiritual? Do you have more insight into our God and spirituality and spiritual energy? I do. Tell me more. I I see it very differently than I used to. Uh -huh. It's much more real uh -huh. than it used to be um, a f just a feeling or just a an emotion, or a, or a story, or a uh, thought. thought. Now it's much more interactive because you feel their spirituality when you connect with them. So. Well, you were, uh, what what religion were you brought in, in in Canada? I was a Catholic. How different is your view of the of God and angels at that time? At now? I don't believe in Catholics anymore. <laughs> But I do believe in God much more. But the way that the Catholics view religion is so tiny. So tiny. James, how were you taken? Were you like physically? Actually, I was interviewed. Um, I was interviewed by Yu Yil, and then I was interviewed by uh, two Pleiadians. And it was a rough second interview, but uh, they they saw the telepathic ability in me. So, so they asked, or did they just? They asked me if I would like to, and I said, "Well, I had a lot of questions." So, do you have a family? Yeah, my question too. I do have a family, but I'm separated from my wife, and um, my family lives with her. I see them now and then, but I'm I'm about uh, 40 miles away from them, so it's not not like a visit that I can do. Why can't they the visit you up there? Wouldn't they? Well, <clears throat> why the? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Why didn't your children and wife couldn't go up there and live with you up there? Um, I don't know why they didn't ask him. I asked uh, these two about them, 
and he did not even respond. So hmm. I'm interested to know why myself. So they say you can't go up, they cannot take people up unless you're above five, uh, five org frequency, spiritual frequency. Is it about right? That's how you feel it? They can take people up? They used to abduct Actually, any people, right? They can abduct any people in the they past. Can, they can take people under five or work. They can take people under five or work. Mm -hmm. They prefer only to take people for five or and above. However, they do make exceptions in that role. So for taking family just once, it's not a huge risk, I would say. If they abducted lots of people, they should be able to do that. You might... Uh, I think that right now they're... They're not interested in uh, taking anybody other than the people that can help them out. I understand. Holographic projections, you probably experience mm -hmm. lots of them. Can you holographically project with equipment down there and speak to someone on Earth? I cannot, no. Oh, they didn't do that? No. Because they said they used some of the colonists to speak to people down, down below using holographic projections. It wasn't me. <laughs> How, the, the communicator, do you, are you comfortable with using it? Is it a good thing? A communicator? Yeah. Um, Is it a lot of fun? Hmm. Can you browse the internet? Yes. yes. Can it create a, a realistic 3D figure in a the room? They're forbidding me to discuss my communication devices. Oh, that's fine. We already discussed it a lot before. Thank you. They're, but they've made some adaptions. It's much more uh, fun to play with now than it was then. You mentioned a scale of five orgs or something? Yeah, we I'm discussed it before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Five org is their uh, vibration level for the people they want to visit. Okay, and how is that measured? Um, it's a Galactian measurement, and I don't know how they do it. Yeah, and does, would that apply, would, above five, does that apply to very many humans on Earth? Or no, very few. Very few. Is that the vibration level? That's the vibration level, yes. Mm -hmm. It's an org level, they call it an org level. It's your vibrational level. People in this group are in the fours, four point something levels. Uh, you have access to their databases of information? Can you Some read their... Some of it. I have, um, I have access to the things that I need access to. Mostly first contact information. Other planets, other species? Um, first contact information of other species as well. Yeah, I would recommend go out. You are in a position to, not maybe not you, but the whole colony is in a position to invite more consultants from outside, especially Sasania. Yes. Very. I have been given the leadership position in the colony as the head telepath. Mm -hmm. And so I can have some, excuse me, <clears throat> I have some privileges that they don't have. Please read my site, humancolony.org. I that, will do that so. That is my book, book number three, and I outline all the ideas which how you're in a position to invite more help. And you, the, if you miss that opportunity to invite more help, nobody can do that for you. You humans up there are relatively independent. You're hosted, but you're respected. Your free will is respected. So you can invite more help, especially from Galactic Federation. And recently we spoke to Andromedans. Have you spoken to Andromedans? No. So read my book, see the website. We do on a, here on Earth, we have a group of about 100 people and mm -hmm. seven mm -hmm. of them are very active, discussing what can you do up there will, to help us. I will get to meet someone from the Federation of the Light the next very meeting. Good. The next thing is to create an independent human news agency up there. Independent news. It can be hosted by Yale and others, but at some point the logic is very simple. Hold, bear with me. They will have to deal with the United Nations and they will have to expose the crimes against humanity, which are many. And the best people to do that would be humans in a colony or in a news agency. They don't have to release all the negative information at once, but some obvious things like chemtrails and crimes against humanity have to be exposed. And if it is done by humans, that would be most appropriate because aliens would interfere, but humans are in a position to help ourselves to expose the crimes against humanity. I understand. Thank you. The, my 
topics of conversations are limited. I know, I understand, but you can listen. But I can listen and I can make suggestions. However, that topic does not come up very often. More so, I am there to help them with first contact. So, I am not informing them about anything like that. They already are informed. So There should be a discussion group in the colony where you could advise to Yale, advise to our Arcturians. They are, and they are listening to you. Man. Officially write letters from the colony to the High Council proposing things. I already wrote them, but you didn't read them. So please go to the website, read them. Discuss. You have way more information than I do. And write official because you are representatives of the earth. They're not, <clears throat> you're not abductees. You're representatives. So yes. you can do things like inviting consultants, inviting uh, even Christ, Jesus. You can speak to Jesus and ask for his advice. He is active in that. So you have a lot of tools which we don't have. And you're in the safety up there. I have to go now. Thank you much. I appreciate your visit. That was great. I'm back. Hey, Lakesh. Mm. Long time, let's see. I'm only back briefly. Thank you very much for the whole session. The session was great, actually. And thank you for letting James through. And I appreciate all the teaching. That was Nina's doing, again. not mine. Why Must is it be. hard for him to come to you? I do not know. Hmm. Jim's but body is not as healthy. And, you know, younger people maybe have trouble being in it. At least John Lennon had trouble being in it. They they have sometimes pain or something. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. They act like they're in pain sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I have no pain right now. But they, it's perhaps the way it happens. Well, I would think with a big, vast difference in biology and in the the way they are obviously breathing different gases, and Ooh, there must be on. other vast differences. Yes. We're going back and forth here. That was just Jim the talk. Yes. Ooh, we're mixed up here. Okay. I'm back. And you are? I'm the cash. Yeah, something happened. How many of people from the website have been taken so far? Still three? Yes. Mm -hmm. There has been, there has been a um, delay. Right. And there have been many questions because the people that they have taken have been helpful, but not necessarily in the ways that they were assigned to be. Mm -hmm. So um, it is touchy for them to continue to take people from the list at this moment. That doesn't mean they're not going to, but I think they will. But there's something going on there that I'm not understanding. And the decision, there was decision not to contact people down on Earth through the holographic projections, right? They are too afraid of doing that, right? It sounded like, like they analyzed and they decided whoever projects is in danger of being hit by you know mi mi missiles or something. I'm sorry, Max, we're having trouble here. All right. I'm going to pop out. Thank you much. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Blessings to you all. Blessings. Welcome, Jim. Well, thank you.
Very How did it feel? Hmm. The ending there was there was something wrong there in the ending on the Kesha side. Hmm. So I'm not sure what that. Well, was. everybody was tired. You were tired. Well, you, you were James was tired. Oh, hostile. I? Yeah. Huh? No, no yes. I wasn't. I thought so. No. Oh. No. Okay. I just wanted to carry the message across. You just like persistent messages. Maybe it was but the persistence. I think they perceived it as. Um, and that's what I was getting or anyway, that it was being perceived as, well, maybe too assertive. Oh, Forget? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Was there was something going on there at the yeah. end? So. Yeah. But I feel really good in this vortex. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Yeah. Apparently, they have a lot of like, that rules that they're, they just, they're not they allowed fear, to talk about mine. some topics. Well, I know, but I'm they're afraid of this. The, the, That's the, why they what they said believe. to us was the age of secrecy was coming to an end, but there's still a lot of secrets, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> there's still a lot of secrets up there. Yeah. But. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. They said the time of secrecy was coming to an end, didn't they say that? Yes. But they still have a lot of secrets. But they can't tell us here. Yeah. yeah, every time I ra raise the topic about news agency, they get, you know, really upset. Yeah, that's what it was. Uh, I'm yeah. sorry, but you know, they have to answer that. Well, I'm just saying, that's what it was. And that was perfect. I mean, I they know. never pass it along to James. He doesn't right, even read right, the site. Right. So we write all open letters to aliens and the humans in the colony have access to the internet and don't read the site. Mm. So they have a support group here which they don't get support up there. Uh, their, well, issues, yeah, their issues are probably far more complicated than we can even imagine. Right. Well, and we're helping them and they're just I don't confused. think they even know how to address it. Yeah, I at this confused. point. But I mean, I got the feeling when you were talking about that that he was like fading away. I'm so. sorry. Um, so I don't know about that. But he is his. Oh, I. It was like wow. He had a headache or something. <laughs> <laughs> he said it was hard. You acted mm. like distressed. He acted very distressful. Yeah. Oh really? Trust yeah. Me, but distressed. Oh, I yeah, guess. Yes, distressed. Yeah. As far as I was concerned. Yeah. yeah okay. You know, it's half a year as they are there. You know, I proposed the colonies, I guided them through, and now they kind of cut me off. I feel that you know they might use more advice from me and others on the website. I don't think they cut you off, do they? Okay. I mean, they are cutting off. Thank you. My letters to the colonies never reached them. Oh, all right, I didn't know that. I mean, they put the barriers here and there. I didn't answer these questions, but I will get in touch with him and answer. I think it makes the most sense to do that in a separate private. Yeah, channel. this will be a separate. Uh, Lakesh will have to do that separately because this wasn't the format for that. Think, so. Yeah, well, we as humans, we really need their uh, like free energy technology, their healing, health issues. Well, technology. I've learned a lot of alien Reiki. Mm -hmm. They've Taka, Taka. Yeah has uh, taught me some alien Reiki that's not known to Earth, so mm -hmm. I can help with that. She, okay. she taught me a few things, didn't she? Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I've never a recipient, it's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's different, it's not, it's not like the regular stuff. It's very strong though. Yeah, it's very like, dense, but a beautiful dense, it's soothing and like a healing balm, but it's an energetic Mm -hmm. It's almost like a gel yes. energy. Mm. Yeah. A gel energy that goes in, and she's experienced it. So. Like it like fills in all any, I don't want to say like holes, but just it feels like it just fills, soothes anything that ails you. It's just a beautiful, mm. like, yeah, dense gel like energy. It's interesting. Mm. Are they likely to be helping us with other, like, what I call technology, like free energy? Um, is that coming in now, or is that going to wait a few more the, That technology um, has already been given to somebody. Okay, because it's going to take... They give it to whoever they think should have it, I guess. Yeah, well, it's going to take a few years and millions of dollars to pr start producing the hardware that we need to do that. Yeah. And meanwhile, I'm sure the oil companies are going to be trying to block it. Right. So, but they're... Um, they do give information. 
I'm not really good at giving Max information because I don't know the meanings of the words and stuff that they're trying to tell him. Mm -hmm. so, and sometimes they come to me and say, what word should I use here? And I, I give them the wrong word. So. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially when it comes to DNA. Yes. Um, I know nothing about, nothing, yeah. absolutely nothing about it. So We'll have to have a little, you know, Run through, yeah. run through the terminology so at least you learn the term. Uh, yeah, because they're the, using the wrong terminology with yeah. them. Because they're trying to pull it out of me. And I'm like going, is it that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that's kind of the opposite of the Edgar Casey work, where yeah. Casey sometimes couldn't even pronounce the medical terminology right. when he woke up. Yeah. Right. But there were terms that he clearly did not have stored up in his head. Yeah, I think they changed it because of that, because he yeah. couldn't because we can't pronounce it anyway, so they're trying to use our words now. Yeah, that's another issue about vocabulary. Uh, as they speak through you, mm -hmm. obviously they're from a different language, totally different language than English mm -hmm. or American. They have a translator, but a, a machine? they doesn't have all our. It doesn't have all. <coughs> there's words that don't translate. Yeah. Just like Google Translator. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, there's words that don't translate, and so they'll come in and try to find something close. So, and that, that, they'll take a phrase that'll mean something close, because some of their words can be a, a sentence to yeah. us. Yeah, so. which comes out all the time in linguistics on our planet. <coughs> uh, the, uh, right. the Eskimos have, I think it's 32 different words to describe snow, because uh -huh. their life depends on snow. Right, exactly. <laughs> We have like two words, you know, wet and dry, or yeah. you know, fluffy and soft. <laughs> fluffy and soft. And that's all we but care they about. They have different, they have the hard snow, the soft snow, yeah. the wind swept snow. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, so just going, you know, a few hundred miles from here, but they, the vocabulary is different. They need the different terminology so they can um, know how to plan for their day. So. Yeah. So when you talk about somebody from a different planet or a different spaceship or something, trying to use our vocabulary. That's got to be a real challenge. Right. Any other questions you have? I, have I know a lot. Yes. Yeah. Do you know what prohibits most humans from being telepathic and what can we do to increase that? The telepathy starts in the heart chakra hmm. for most people. But there are some people that it starts in the third eye. So most people. Um, the first thing that happens when people are starting to become telepathic is they feel the intent of another person. Mm -hmm. They can understand good. They know good and evil just by being around somebody. You know, they can sense it. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a lot of people that, um, you know, there's. You're not sure, mm -hmm. but if you, you know, speak a word to them and you can feel their intention, that's the beginnings of telepathy. And um, it starts with the heart chakra. That's what I was told. And, mm -hmm. But there are those that it starts with the, the, the intellect. So I get both. <clears throat> I think it's connected. But, but they are connected. Because yeah. the second place it goes is, this, is here. Mm -hmm. so, but for humans, it starts in the heart chakra. For 99% of them. There are a couple of theories. Um, one is um, <coughs> by. Um, Good question. Um, I forgot the word. Dvir, Adrian Dvir. Uh, he's already not with us, but he was talking to Yael and got lots of specific information on telepathy. And his explanation was that telepathy goes from your physical mind to your higher self, basically, spiritual connection. Then your higher self speaks to a higher self of another person, and then her higher self of another person kind of translates it back to the to the physical mind. That's one thing, and it doesn't um, disagree with what Bashar says. And Bashar says that to become telepathic, you have to become another person. You come to the same frequency, you synchronize, you become one, and mm -hmm. that's you speak mm -hmm. where you speak. That's what Bashar says. So mm -hmm. both explanations make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you can synchronize on heart level, and you can synchronize on on eye level or right. mental level. Another person I know, she is um, uh, an abductee who volunteered to go there, and she's there all 
much of the time uh, speaking to different aliens and they just look at her and she can talk to them right and whenever she looks eye, eye to eye or at least see the faces she can understand if she turns away she immediately loses the connection because she cannot hear them anymore that's exactly right. So mm. face to face, I mean, there is one telepathy, you know, dimension to dimension. We can, you know, some people can from here can communicate to the aliens like channeling, and some is face to face, which is involved looking at each other and synchronizing physically. Mm -hmm. So there, there are many kinds. Mm -hmm. um, Yael are very, very telepathic. Uh, they're very advanced, and uh, they measure the telepathy of. James and Randall and others in the colony in percent of their telepathy. So how how big percent is? So a typical human is be below three uh, percent. Some talented humans maybe around around maybe ten. And they celebrated first when they reached about twenty five percent. When this first telepath reached about twenty five percent in the colony, that was a big celebration. They kind of. Uh, be, we're be getting through into human mind and understanding how we work. Most important for them was not the knowledge, but the emotion. Yeah. And Liren emotion. say the same. When they spoke to our telepaths, that's changed the whole Liren civilization, how they relate to us. Same with, with the Yale, same with, with Arcturians. Yes. Telepathy has a tendency to cut down on the, the strength of emotions. Because you don't want to be you, you don't want to be insulting somebody with your thoughts. Do you understand that? I mean, it's like you would assault them if you were feeling a strong emotion and they happen to connect with you. So mm -hmm. it happens. It sort of calms you, your emotions down, so they can understand that you're uh, upset or whatever. But it's not like a huge like what we feel. Mm -hmm. It's not like ah so. My objective friend says that uh, one of the arts you get when you get, become telepathic is how to hold off what you want to say. You want to say only what you want to say and not expose the whole uh, mess inside you. So, uh, you know, all telepathic races, right. they kind of learn it from childhood how to uh, communicate well, to speak what you want to say and not anything else. And Yale especially... Uh, artful in holding all the information. You still can have lots of secrets. You cannot hide the intention, so intention is immediately seen, but you don't expose the uh, factual information. So they can keep lots of secrets. At some point, this dude was trying to convince, to propose the, the plan of contact to Arcturians, and they didn't trust him. They said, you, if you want to continue, you have to open yourself completely and dissolve in us for a second or something so we can really see what, what's your inside motives. Basically, unhide everything. And for him it was a big personal decision. It was, I guess, first time in your life when you do that. Maybe you unhide it from your important mate, but, but not to any other. So for him it was like, like a sacred, uh, how do you say, exposure. Exhibitionism, that's how it's called it, right? And, but, you know, when he spoke to me, he, he realized, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a sacrifice he has to do for humanity, and he did it. And it wasn't as bad. Mm -hmm. And he also had a glance into Arcturian way of thinking. When he, was, he visited the console, he had to basically open himself. So it was a big thing for, for them to kind of dissolve in each other. Mm -hmm. Well, things have been smoother since then. Once we had a visitor, it, he didn't introduce himself. It was someone, some alien. When I was talking about love, he said, he visited and said, what can you understand about love? Love exto is external for you. For us, love is becoming other person. It's complete, complete uni unity, spiritual unity. That's, you know, that's again, you know, one of the mm -hmm. facets of, of telepathy. <coughs> Well, all right. Thank I you. think that's it for now. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for coming. Thanks. If you folks want to stick around.